over the weekend, a bit of a problem was discovered with how GitHub handles readme files, letting you do things like this. Maybe you can't tell what's going on yet. How about this? Yes, it worked with GIFs as well. What about this one? Or you could be a little bit more reasonable and just make it like a Tumblr page. This didn't just work on profile readmes though, it also worked on repo readmes as well. And you could even make it as obnoxious as this. This has since been patched, but before that, all you needed to add was a line that looked like this. This might look fairly complex, but most of this is just CSS styling. The actual minimal version of the exploit is very simple, but we'll get more into how it works in just a bit. Now, the CSS part there was very important because this is what is known as a CSS injection. So we all know that through inspect element, we can go and add custom CSS on our local side. With a CSS injection, you are changing it for every other user as well. Now, it's unclear just how long this bug was present on GitHub because the joys of proprietary software development, but we do know who originally spotted the bug. They go by cloud over on Twitter. That was the first example I showed before. And would you at all be surprised to know that it's a weeb with a Lucky Star profile picture that spotted the bug? Because there seems to be a high correlation between being a weeb and being in the security industry. Now for reference, when you spot a bug like this, the correct thing to do is go to the platform, report the bug, give them some period until you disclose the bug, and then report it publicly. They didn't do this, this is the first reporting of the bug, and then just started shitposting about it. Ooh, husband, you disclosed the vulnerability publicly. Now we don't have bounty money and we'll be homeless. Now, to be fair, they did have an email discussion with GitHub, and it was addressed within about 12 hours or so, but they kind of did it in the wrong order, allowing us to see things like this. Enough rambling, what actually happened here? Well, to put it simply, a lack of proper user input sanitization, which is always a recipe for disaster. One of the first things I was told in university is assume that every single one of your users is malicious and everything they send you is in some way trying to break your system. If something they can send you is going to affect other users or going to affect your system in a negative way, make sure you check it, make sure you sanitize it, and make sure it is squeaky clean before you do anything with that data. Now, GitHub, like most websites out there, relies on some open source libraries. The one that we care about today is called MathJax. This is a really popular library for taking LaTeX, MathML, and ASCII math notation, and then converting it into something that can be displayed on a web page. As we saw here, this math bit, this indicates that what we are doing next is going to be something that MathJax needs to handle. Now, the intended purpose of MathJax is displaying things like mathematical equations, but there was a bit of a problem with how it was parsing this statement. Now, the main part that we care about here is from this Unicode section onwards, and this blog post here does a fantastic job at breaking down the problem, also including a very, very minimal example. How to achieve the injection. GitHub uses MathJax to render math expressions presented in any GitHub markdown content, such as readme files, issue comments, and pull request comments. Yes, it was also working in those as well. And one of the many LaTeX macros that MathJax support is called Unicode. It allows the rendering of a Unicode character. It also allows the font style of the character to be customized by letting the user pass in a custom font family like so. So here we are saying to draw this character here with this font. Turns out it is possible to inject any inline CSS within the square brackets. So you can include the font family and then all of this other CSS. The CSS is then injected to the style attribute of the mText element that displays the Unicode character. 
many have taken this opportunity to rice up the GitHub profile pages. This will make a lot more sense if I show you the HTML. So when we are setting the font family here, the only thing that is supposed to be getting set in the style option here is font family, in this case, to my font. But it's naively taking everything in the square brackets and then just dumping it in the style setting. So if you include a semicolon here, which means the end of a statement, you're basically breaking out of this setting right here and then including anything else you want. So in this case, all of this stuff, and then you get something that looks more like this. And then you can go even further because CSS styling lets you set a background image. Now you can see the problem. This blog post goes very deep into the code behind MathJax that made all of this possible, and I highly, highly recommend you go and read it for yourself. But since it is just walls and walls of text, I'm going to jump ahead to the explanation. Let's go through the attack step by step. The code that backs Unicode treats anything in between the square brackets, so all of this right here, as the name of the font family and extracts that entire string as the value for the font family. The value is stored as an attribute of MML node under font family. CHTML goes to the tree of MML node and encounters this node. To CHTML is called on that node. Handle styles and thus this.styles.css text is called as a result. This transforms that string into this right here because it assumes the font family only stores the valid font family names, but it doesn't realize that it's actually just turned it into a full CSS style setting, including everything else. The produce string is then set as the value of the style attribute of the mtext node via set attribute. CSS successfully injected. Nowhere along this chain does it actually check what is inside the square brackets. It just assumes that because this is the way that this setting is supposed to be used, nothing else is going to be included. The one thing not explained here is this little bit at the end. This is basically just saying, draw this character. In this case, it's saying, draw the empty character. Draw nothing there. Now, do you want to know one of the two best parts about this? This exploit never needed to be possible because you don't need to set the font family by setting the entire style. There is a system in JavaScript for just setting specifically the font family. And when you set it like this, it automatically does sanitization. So if you include something more than just the font family, it's going to assume it's an invalid font. Going through CSS text and setting the entire style is the harder way to do it. It is the more roundabout way of doing this. Now, this was the initial form of the exploit, but it did get patched and then a slightly different variation started to exist. All that happened is this slash right here was changed with this string. What does that string mean? Well, it's the hex code for backslash. Initially, they didn't properly patch this out and they just patched out specifically writing backslash. You can inject backslash in other ways and that got the exploit working again. At this point, it seems like it is completely patched on GitHub's side. If you go to a repo or a profile that is making use of this, you're going to see this error message. The following macros are not allowed, Unicode, and then the rest of the string being written out here. Now, I said there were two best parts here, and I've only told you one of them. So let's look at the second one. This is not a new issue. This got reported on November 13th, 2023 on the MathJax repo. This is marked as open, but the reason it is marked as open is it's merged into the development branch. It has been in the development branch since November 21st, 2023. This has been patched for over seven months. But that does not mean that GitHub was running an older version. They could be running the most up-to-date version and it wouldn't have fixed anything because the latest stable release was June 9th, 2022 almost a year and a half prior to the bug being patched. Now, there is a beta release that came out on May 1st that does have the patch inside of it. But 
a platform like GitHub probably shouldn't be running beta libraries. So they had no way of running the patched version and no way of knowing it had already been patched. This was a dumb little problem that never really needed to happen in the first place, but it got fixed so quickly that really it didn't do any damage. And yes, there are certain things that can be done with CSS, which could be problematic, but hey, what we saw was fun, and that's all that matters. So, if you saw this when it was happening, uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Did you run into any repos that you were very surprised why they looked weird? And did you make your repo look weird? I would love to know. And if there happens to be an archive, do send it to me on, like, Twitter or something, on Mastodon or Discord. I want to see it. Anyway. That's going to be it for me. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Liberapay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And inject the CSS right into my veins.